Hey gang, and welcome back for another video here on Jochem. Okay gang, so if you're coming from the ester and ether formation video, then this one naturally comes next in that I kind of left it to where we talked about why we needed Ag2O to facilitate, you know, the Williamson ether syn bleh, Williamson ether esque, you know, synthesis of, you know, getting a cyclic monosaccharide to get ethers all over the place, you know, converting all those alcohols to ethers. Well, the reason why you can't use a stronger base to deprotonate those oxygens, right? The reason why we needed that mild silver oxide was because of the, you know, it's in that case it was a bad thing, but the risk of Undergoing epimerization. So first off, uh, I guess we'll talk about this, and then we'll just mention what an epimer is. Talk about you know how you know if you're asked to draw an epimer, what how you do that. So if we have something like this, and this is D glucose right here, let's just say we have D glucose under the uh, you know in basic conditions, right? We have sodium hydroxide, intermediate base. What happens? So you will actually go through an intermediate called an enediol. Uh, there's, you know, I'm not drawing the mechanism here. I've never really, you know, and I could be wrong, uh, but I've never seen it asked. So I didn't think it was that so much important to have in the, the video, but you go through this equilibrium where based on, you know, when you go through this intermediate, you either revert to your initial, right? This is the same structure. This is D-glucose on both sides. But what you can find out happening is one of your stereo centers, and I picked to show it here, that stereo center can flip. You can see we have right, left, right, right. Now we have left, left, right, right. We actually started with D-glucose and because of our basic environment, our basic conditions, we ended up with D-mannose. So the reason why silver oxide was needed for the etherization of you know, cyclic monosaccharide, a pyranose, for example, is to avoid accidental epimerization. The thing is, you know, we're not going to interact with, you know, this won't happen in your cyclic form, but remember there's an equilibrium between these two and I'm not saying it, you know, you're going to, you know, it's going to shift a lot at the very beginning, but the moment you start disrupting this equilibrium and you take this D-glucose, that straight chain, you convert it to something else. Remember Le Chatelier's principle, right? Uh, when you start to kind of uh, you, when you upset this equilibrium, you start decreasing the amount of this that, that exists, the equilibrium will shift to avoid and counteract the change. So you might start accidentally converting more of your cyclic form to your straight chain form, which then becomes the monos because you're, epi you're epimerizing. So just something, you know, that is what epimerization is. The most common way I've seen epimers uh, asked in a test environment truly is this. Just knowing that what an epimer is, what is an epimer? So if you have a sugar like this, a valid epimer of this sugar is just having a sugar that differs in one location of, you know, of stereochemistry. So basically you're just drawing a diastereomer, but you're changing one location. So for example, if we had this right here, let's just say I wanted to draw an epimer of D-glucose. So I could just change, you know, d manos, for example, is an epimer of D-glucose because we flipped one stereo center. But if I want to draw a different epimer of D-glucose, I could flip the second one. So I'd keep the first one the same. That's, that's you know, we only change one. I could flip the second one. And this could be, you know, this is an epimer of D-glucose. And if I, for example, wanted to draw an epimer of d manos, of course, there's one right here in D-glucose, but let's just say I wanted to draw another one. So I could have my sugar set up like this, and let's just say I flip the bottom one. So I had left, so I have left, left, right, and then I changed the bottom one, which yes, does give me an L sugar, but we only differ at one stereo center. So whatever this L sugar is, it is an epimer of d Mono. So that's all there is to epimers and epimerization gang. So uh, just wanted to throw it in there because it it's always, I feel like a follow-up question just to draw an epimer. And if you don't know what, what that is, then you know, you're down the river without a paddle. So if you're watching me from YouTube, thank you so much. You rock. Make sure to check out jokem.io, the same videos, but there are attached worksheets below them videos. 
you know, there's uh, the, there's solutions that go along with them. They're 100% free. Make sure to check them out. And if you're watching me from Joe Chem, well, then don't you just rock. Thank you for tuning in, gang, and I hope to see you all in the next video.